Hello, Lee here, and this is Publicly Speaking in part two of my review of Ayn Rand's doorstopper, Atlas Shrugged. Part one focused on the message, which was epic. Part two focuses on the book itself, which is shit, which I will then render into its component parts, which are also shit. So, starting with the setting, the book takes place in 1950s America. The rest of the world is hurting after World War II, and America is helping out with a warped version of the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was the American reconstruction of Europe after World War II, where we rendered aid to keep the nation solvent while we rebuilt their infrastructure so they could support themselves without dissolving into third world versions of themselves. Were they grateful? No, but that's not an issue I'm going to discuss today. In the book, however, all we're doing is giving up freebies, and nothing else. Oh, also, every single other country is socialist or communist, and they all hate America despite receiving aid from us, like how some people in welfare hate the government, except instead of poor families, it's poor country. So, characters. Ayn Rand's characters are caricatures, badly written, oh dear god. Oh well, there is one exception, an industrialist by the name of Hank Reardon is well written, but I'll get to him last, since he's the best, and I'll try and point out the other good pieces of characterization in this piece of utter tripe. The main character is Dagny Taggart, who is a complete Mary Sue. A Mary Sue is a character that's too damn perfect, stupidly perfect for the story. She has no flaws, we're told that she has flaws, but she has no flaws, really. Dagny Taggart is the vice president in charge of Taggart Transcontinental, her family's railway company in a world where railways are the shit. She's not the president because the 50s women couldn't run companies, so her being VP and essentially in charge of everything was pushing the envelope. She is smart, she is strong, she is respected, she is good at every fucking thing she does, she's amazingly beautiful, although we're told she's average looking in true Mary Sue fashion, but in every single freaking description of her appearance, she's fucking beautiful. It's seriously ridiculous. Also, every single good male character is head over heels in love with her, while the bad ones dismiss her because she's a woman, aka being sexist bigots, or fear her, or respect her. So, yeah, everyone pretty much likes her in their own way. Second of all, you have Francisco Danconia. This dude's like Midas, but with copper instead of gold, and instead of transmuting it, he just finds it, mines it, and makes shit tons of money doing so. Early, he was all ambitious and objectivist, but now he's a degenerate playboy, but always loved Dagny at heart and always will. Oh, and the two were lovers when they were in the teens, because really, who doesn't love this chick? Next, you have Alice Wyatt. This dude is an industrialist who somehow managed to get oil from shale, which in the 1950s, and I still think to this day, is ridiculously inefficient, costing more to get it than you can sell it for. But he figured out how to do so effectively, thus revitalizing the Midwest and making Colorado a new center for booming industrialism. He's cool. Also, you have James Taggart, Dagon Taggart's brother and the president of Taggart Transcontinental. He is a massive parasite feeding off Dagny's ambition and drive, and as a whiny little bitch. That's the best way to describe him, as a whiny little bitch. He doesn't do anything, it just whines, that he's less respected than his sister, who manages the whole damn railroad. It's just sad. Then there's John Galt. Who is John Galt? Well, there's so much to say about this guy, I'm going to keep it simple. He's basically this anonymous dude who saw the way the world was going, and allowed the people who were driving society down to do everything they wanted to do very, very quickly thus essentially allowing them to push the world down the crapper in a decade instead of a century or more. He's good at everything. He's smart. He's perceptive. He's amazingly handsome. Oh, and of course he's head over heels in love with Dagny, but in a really creepy stalker way that he's been watching her for the past ten years, which is fucked up. But then he ends up with Dagny. But all the other men that love Dagny all know he's so incredibly awesome that they're okay with it. Seriously, what the fuck? Last person, Hank Reardon, or the only three-dimensional character in this story. Reardon. I like this guy. Owns a company named Reardon Steel, which makes, well, steel. He's the only person with character development in the entire fucking book, and he starts off accepting the current system of moochers and governmental control because he's so completely freaking awesome that he barely even notices the drain from his profits that the government steals from him with ridiculous taxes. He supports his family, who hates and resents him for being successful, don't ask me why, and puts up with their condescending bullcrap because he doesn't give a shit. Oh, he also came up with this stuff named Reardon Metal. This stuff is the shit. It's like stainless steel, but like five times better. It has this weird green tint to it, but it's lighter than steel, stronger than steel, cheaper than steel, lasts for fucking forever, both from wear and tear and from oxidation. If we actually had this, holy fucking crap, things would be awesome. Okay, he is cool, everyone else is one-dimensional and blows. Then there's the dialogue. Oh my fucking god, the dialogue. Ayn Rand does not know how people speak. 
Seriously, every single person who says anything at all, more than a few sentences long, sounds like they're giving a fucking monologue, or rating at every fucking opportunity. This book is infamous for its speeches, and there is one thing I never understood, is why in the middle of making these great speeches about how this is so great, or about how you suck so much, or this is the way things should be, no one ever interrupts these people. Can you imagine anyone at a party or a business meeting or any other semi-public forum giving a 20-minute speech without getting interrupted at all? I mean, it just doesn't work. The only person with an excuse is John Galt with his infamous 50-page speech near the end of the book, telling everyone, this is why you suck. This is why I'm awesome. This is why your lives are in the crapper. Thing is, for a man who's so smart, perceptive, and knows people so well, he doesn't understand human nature. The rule of three is the rule of three for a reason. If you're given reasons for something, you have to give three reasons and then you stop. That's it. Any more and people stop listening. This guy goes on and on and on. Read aloud, the speech is about an hour and a half long. He gets away with it because he broadcasts it to every radio ever somehow. Seriously. Normally, you tell someone you should have done A and you did B, you should have done C and you did D, you should have done E and you did F. That's it. But he doesn't stop. He goes on with, you should have done G and you did H, I instead of J, K instead of L, M instead of Q, S instead of Z. You should have done this and you did that, you should have done that and you did this. You should have gone left and you went right, up and down and he doesn't shut the fuck up. Seriously, this guy pisses me off. Fuck. Yes, I hate this book. No, I hate this story. I love this book. No, I hate this book. I love this message. The message is good. The story. Oh, God, the story. I'm going to simplify this because the book is so long that just to explain this thousand page epic would take half an hour and you probably don't care that much. And if you do, just go fucking read Wikipedia. This is the cliff notes of the cliff notes. Dagny runs a railroad company, James, her brother, spends millions to run a line to Mexico where Danconia is, while Mexico is nationalizing all this property. But they don't care because James is all like, wow, it's Francisco Danconia, he'll make money. We're not going to research his operation, but he'll make money. Whereas Dagny's all like, this is bullshit, Ellis Wyatt is the shit, let's get a line there and we'll have more business than we know what to do with. He says no, she says fine, fuck you guys, I'm going to make a railroad of my own that goes there. But he makes her sign a contract saying if the railroad is profitable, then she'll sell it to him at cost to be part of Tra Taggart Transcontinental Railroad. And she's like, fine, I was going to do that anyways because I love this company, but seriously, guys? She then goes and builds it with Reardon Metal to showcase it because it is the shit, but no one will touch it because the Metallurgists Union is all like, wow, we didn't make this, so we're going to try and ban it because we're dicks. And James is all like, you can't use Reardon Metal, and Dagny is all like, it's my railroad, I'll do what I want, bitch. She builds it, it's awesome, and everything's looking up. Then the government gets involved, because that always makes things better. The government then says, Screw ability, we need to help people because of need! So those that work hard, like Ellis White, will get taxed, while those that do nothing get free shit. Which, you know, is nothing like real life. So they tax the shit out of Colorado and tell all the industries there exactly what they can and can't do. They tell Ellis Wyatt exactly how much he can produce and how many rail cars he can run, so as to make everything fair for everyone else, thus putting a stranglehold on Colorado, so the rest of the U.S. can have a chance, despite the fact they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Ellis and the other industrialists start going, fuck this shit, I'm out of here, and start disappearing. So the government starts putting stooges in to replace them, who promptly run their respective companies into the ground, because they suck at it. And because the stooges didn't suck at it, they'd have their own companies to begin with. Shit goes downhill from there. More controls are put in place, more people leave, shit gets worse, rinse and repeat a couple of times. Then the government's like, hey, we're going to steal every intellectual property ever just to make things fair, including Reardon Metal, and they blackmail Hank Reardon until he gives it to them voluntarily. Then it gets worse with riots and shit, and then you find out that all of the industrials have been going to a magical valley of industry and prosperity and yay, somewhere in an undeveloped part of, like, Wisconsin or something. Seriously, what the fuck? Dagny stays because she really wants to save everyone if they just listen to reason and see the light and shit like that. Then that goes bad and every man that loves her all rush in and get her out of there and there's some fights and some torture and shit and they all escape right as everything goes really, really bad and the power dies in New York City. Seriously, they're flying away and the city goes dark. And that's the story. Here's the ending and this is what pissed me off more than any other fucking thing else. I could have put up with the bland characters, the shitty dialogue, everything, because the one thing that Ayn Rand knows how to write, it's civil engineering and industry. This is the woman's forte. 
The plans that she comes up with, even the evil ones, are so insanely evil and well done that you go, holy shit, that makes sense in a stupid socialist way. Thing is, the book ends with everyone escaping into the magical valley and it's going, we're gonna wait a year or two and come back when everyone's shit has been completely ruined and go, we're back and we're doing things our way or we're leaving again, so fuck you all. I know I was reaching the end of the book, but I was expecting, even with the barest details, of how they came back and what they set up with this utopia that they're going to make. I wanted to see how it worked, because that's what she's good at doing. She's good at explaining how things work. And after spending the entire book trashing the current government and economic system, I wanted to see how she was going to do it better. However, instead of that, all I got was this really hopeful, vague ass, and one day we shall return, and our sign shall be the sign of the dollar, and industry shall rule the land, la di da di da 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 And then it ends. Seriously? Yep, that's how it ends. What the fuck? I'm sorry, this just pisses me off. <sighs> Long story short, this book fucking blows. It blows giant fucking donkey balls. The only reason this got published it was for, is that it was from a well-known author already, so it got immunity from it editors. Because editing is the devil and the death of all ideas, instead of just refining them so people actually care and you don't end up with this tripe. Thing is, I want to be a teacher. And I, I would want to teach this book because the philosophy and the message are so good. But I would also teach this as the way not to write a book. That's my review. There you go. This is Publicly Speaking. And next video, I will be discussing a movie. Probably Wanted. Because the movie was kind of kick-ass. Then again, so was kick-ass. Wanted was good, and I won't spend two videos reviewing it. This is Lee, Publicly Speaking, and signing off.